Hello, magical, beautiful, incredible human beings of this earth. I sound like I am. I just watched Pixels last night um, with Adam Sandler. Awesome movie. So funny. Made me laugh a million times. Um, but they were, you know, taken over by a hostile planet of pixelated characters from the 1980s arcade games. Anyway... So I just wanted to kind of stop in today and really share with you a major impact and a major uh, secret of my business, of my life, and what was is truly incredible is like yesterday I wrote that I'm a bit of a crier. Not a bit of a crier. I'm a big crier. Like I cry over everything. Um, and this past Saturday was something called the Archangel Summit. And this was an incredible event that was held in Toronto with magical people who guide you and give you information based on their life, their goals. It's like a room full of energetic soul beings creating a beautiful future for everyone. Now at that event, I got to be highlighted as one of 50 authors there through the author incubator. And it was honestly like I've never in my life dreamt that that was a possibility for me. Um, even though I joined the program, even though I'm working it like, good morning, Michaela, like nobody's business, still being highlighted as an author and walking around and being able to give stamps to people blew my mind. It's like things become more real every day for us all. One of the people and another author that I absolutely adore and love, I had done a chakra reading on and, you know, we had talked about how the energy within us really changes the energy of what we're able to put out into the universe and what we're able to like connect and do. Uh, Michelle, good morning. Um, and so at the end of the day, after, you know, I'd, I'd just finished crying about We Day, which is in Toronto, which is a beautiful event uh, that helps build schools and fund um, third world countries. And so I was a little bit emotional. It was a busy day. Aisha Bascaro comes up to me, one of the fellow authors, and she gives me this mug. And as you know, I love pottery mugs. And it says, create your future. And this mug is special to her because she made this mug for her book launch team. And she gave them out to everybody on the launch team. And because this saying, create your future, matters to her. Because coming over into the United States and being able to build the future that she wanted for herself and her family and those before her, uh, that was her powerful, magical space. And so for her to include me and choose me in, in receiving this beautiful Create Your Future mug was beyond anything I could hold in by the end of the day and I cried again. So talking about yesterday's cry fest. Now what's magical for me about the words Create Your Future, maybe a couple of weeks ago you guys noticed that I posted a, a, a list of 10 things in 2015, it was June 5th, 2015, and I wrote out 10 of the baddest, most like incredible, like crazy accomplishments I ever wanted to achieve in my life, in my life. And here we are two years later and six out of 10 things I've already accomplished. Now, what made it possible for me to be able to sit here with you guys today doing tea with Tamara and sharing how I accomplished six things like that blows my mind as well is the fact that I chose to declare to the universe what it was that I wanted for my future, for myself, for my family. I didn't hold back because the fact of the matter is, you guys, is that we can't sit on our couches or sit in our houses, in our homes, and expect the universe to know exactly what is in our mind. The universe is not a mind reader. It doesn't know what you're thinking or feeling. You cannot say, why don't I have XYZ, if you're not even letting XYZ know that it's available for you. So one of the most pivotal and most important things that I tell you guys as my as a coach and as a, you know when I'm working with my people is that to go declare to the universe like it is a drive through window and you want to order up in your life what it is that you see valuable or that you want or is that your mission and that, that shining light wants to get out and I saw that Aisha's here I love my mug Aisha um is the fact that you know one of the things, the two things that I'm going to ask you to do today, because this last couple of weeks is all about having a little actionable step at the end of Tea with Tamara, because that's how movement happens. And it's how I've gotten to where I am. One step at a time with continuous stepping eventually covers a shit ton of ground, just so you know. So I'm really, really a firm believer that we can't just sit and not tell anybody what we want. So declare with as much detail 
what it is that you see for yourself. Meaning, what is your perfect day? Like perfect. And it can be with or without work. It can be with or without family. It can be anything. But I want you to be honest with yourself because it's not fair to the universe or to yourself to say, oh, this sounds like it should be the perfect day. I do X, Y, Z because this is what everybody thinks this is done. Eh, wrong answer. You are going to sit down and you are going to write what your perfect day is. And it's funny because chances are it's not going to be as intense or like woo as you thought it was going to be. Like my perfect day involves waking up, having coffee, getting to work with my clients, walking during lunch, working with some more clients, being home when the kids come home, cooking dinner together, taking extracurricular sports. It's perfect. It's simple. I'm a simple person with a simple life and that is a-okay by me. So be thorough on exactly what that perfect day looks like. Second thing, most important thing, Ready for this? I want you to write in detail what your year from today, from September 13th, looks like. September 13th, 2018. Right? Yes. What's your perfect day? Design it. 2018, September 13th, in as much detail as you want and is possible for you, put it out on paper. And why is this super, super important? Because imagine that you wanted to have, so for instance, I want to have my studio redone, right? And I'm just going to let a contractor come in and I'm not going to tell him anything about what I want. When I walk into the great unveiling, like they do on HGTV and you walk in, if I haven't let that person know anything about who I am and what I want, Do you think my studio space is going to be anything like I would have envisioned it or wanted it? Fuck no, it's not, right? So I want to give as much detail that I want, you know, a barnyard wood. Um, What's that fake wood called? Not hardwood, but the other kind, because it's a garage really is what my studio is. I want to have super duper quabby windows right here with special curtains. I want built-in bookshelves. I want shag rug on one side. I want one of those chaise lounges, you know, like I'm like Marilyn Monroe. I don't know why, because I've always wanted one. But the more detail, what colors, what event, like this is the key to success. Laminate, thank you, Teresa. Um, This is the piece of the puzzle that you guys, I wish I could get, I wish I would like convey to you the importance of declaring the universe rolling down that window screaming out the details of how you want to see your life one year from now and how this actually pivotally makes a major shift and difference in your life because your life matters to me and it matters to those around you and it matters to you I hope and your kids and so be detailed because somewhere along the way I'm pretty sure we were told it's selfish to like ask for things and want things and design and you know express and have freedom to say like having an expensive rug is terribly ridiculous of you but what if it were I was so my mentor has a castle and in her castle she has this freaking amazing rug in her room that you can do karaoke and do you want to know what I want to do every time I'm there take my shoes off and just skate on the softness of that rug And I don't know why, but the way that that rug feels between my toes, I want that feeling. I want that feeling in my life. I want to be able to skate on my own rug. Anyway, that's a side story. The second thing of this that's really important, you guys, is that along the way, all of this declaring what you want and being present to serve and, you know, having that mission out into the world, do not, I repeat, do not make this something that isn't fun for you. Can you imagine that all along this, you're putting all these pieces in place and yet you're not having a good time? Why? Why would you do that to yourself? Play, fun, being a kid. I'm in pigtails for crying out loud. Do you want to know why? Because I like them. (laughs) That's why it doesn't have anything else to do with anything. And because it makes me feel like I'm not going to be 40 next month. What? Anyway. So you want to make sure that you are including joy and play and all you guys are magical too. And especially you, Liz, you know why, um, is it include the play. So have you ever written down? Cause you know, I like to do this to you guys. Let's write some more. So perfect day, perfect year. Why don't you guys write down what it is that you used to do for play? Let's just play a game, play, play, play. You know, what do you remember being as a kid doing? I used to play Barbies. Not that that's cool right now, but I definitely used to color and coloring is a thing that I absolutely do right now. Sandy, you are killing it down here. I'm loving everything that you're putting 
right? Ah, so good. But write a list. Did you bike ride? Did you play hopscotch? Okay, that one I loved, hopscotch. Did you skip rope? Like, what was it that brought you joy? And why the heck are we not doing more of that? Why are we not? You know, I believe that deep down I was always a fairy. That's not surprising to anyone. So living a magical life is play for me. Making wands and fairy doors and fairy houses and, you know, ooh, I had totally going off screen for one second because this past weekend I was given the most joyful, playful gift and it made me so happy that somebody actually got this for me and said, Tamara, this reminds me of you. I saw it and I was like, do you guys remember doing this as a kid? Esther, joy, right here, joy and play. Right, double dutch. Yes, rope swings. Yes, write that list, guys. Write them here. Right used to be which you play sparkles. 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 Right? So imagine that we could create the future just as we wanted it. As fun, playful, fairy like creatures, because magic is a part of my life. Right? Create your future. Design it. Because there is nobody else who's going to help you design it but you. And if you're being true to who you are inside that beautiful, gorgeous heart of yours, and you are shining that light as bright as you possibly can, like a beacon, like a lighthouse for others to show them that shining your light is the key, that is the magic, then guys, I'm so honored. I'm going to cry again because I've been emotional since my daughter's surgery yesterday. Um, I'm so honored to share this earth with you and to share space with you. And I love you guys. And I hope that you guys have the most magical Wednesday in the entire world. Heart chakra to heart chakra. Care Bear stare that shit everywhere. Because it's so important. And thank you. And I will talk to you guys next week. I got a big closing on this little sequence. And uh, have a magical day.